July 25th, St. James the Greater, Apostle. St. James, the brother of St. John the Evangelist and the son of Zebedee, was called the Greater to distinguish him from the other apostle of the same name, surnamed the Less, because he was younger. St. James the Greater was by birth a Galilean and by trade a fisherman with his father and brother, living probably at Bethsaida, where St. Peter also dwelt at the time. Jesus was walking by the lake of Gennesareth, saw Peter and andrew fishing and he called them to come after him promising to make them fishers of men going a little further on shore he saw two other brothers james and john in a ship with zebedee their father mending their nets and he also called them who forthwith left their nets and their father and followed him st james was present with his brother st john and st peter at the cure of peter's mother-in-law and the raising of the daughter of jairus from the dead and in the same year year jesus formed the company of his apostles into which he adopted james and john he gave these two the surname sons of thunder seemingly on the account of an impetuous spirit and fiery temper for example when a town of samaritans refused to entertain christ they suggested he should call down fire from heaven to consume it but our redeemer gave them to understand that his meekness and patience were the arms by which they were to conquer you know not of what spirit you are the son of man came not to destroy souls but to save but the instruction and example of the son of god did not fully enlighten the understanding of the apostles nor purify their hearts until the holy ghost has shed his light upon them until then their virtue was still impure perfect as appeared when the mother of james and john imagining that he was going to set up a temporal kingdom asked him that her two sons might sit the one on his right and the other on his left in his kingdom the two sons of zebedee spoke by the mouth of their mother as well as by their own but christ directed his answer to them telling them they knew not what they asked for in his kingdom preferments are attainable not by the forward and ambitious but by the most humble the most laborious and the most patient he therefore asked them if they were able to drink of his cup of suffering they answered without hesitation we can our lord told them that they should indeed have their portion of suffering but he could make no other disposal of the honors of his kingdom than according to the proportion of every one's charity and patience in suffering the son of man also is not come to be ministered unto but to minister and to give his life as a redemption for many nevertheless these apostles who from time to time act impetuously and had to be rebuked for the very ones whom our lord turned to on special occasions peter this saint james and john alone were admitted to be spectators of his glorious transfiguration and they alone were taken to the innermost recesses of gethsemane on the night of the agony and bloody sweat at the beginning of his passion exactly where st james preached and spread the gospel after our lord's ascension is not known as we have no account from the writers of the first ages of christianity however st james was the first among the apostles who had the honor to follow his divine master by martyrdom which he suffered under king herod agrippa i who inaugurated the persecution of the christians in order to please the jews eusebius relates that his accuser observing the courage and constancy of mind wherewith the apostle underwent his trial was so impressed that he repented of what he had done declared himself a christian and was also condemned to be beheaded as they were both led together to execution he begged pardon of the apostle st james after pausing a little turned to him and embraced him saying peace be with you he then kissed him and they were both beheaded together the holy scriptures simply say that agrippa killed james the brother of john with the sword he was buried at jerusalem but according to the tradition of spain dating from around eight thirty the body was translated first to ira flavia now called el padron and then to compostela where during the middle ages the shrine of santiago became one of the greatest of all christian shrines this shrine by the tenth century became a center of pilgrimage as the pilgrimages and devotions to st 
St. James grew, and he became the focus of the Christian resistance to the Moorish invaders of Spain. His help in conquering the Islamic invaders was acknowledged in his title of the Moor Slayer, and many pictures of his statues show St. James as a warrior with a dead Moor at his feet. During the 11th and 12th centuries, more than half a million pilgrims a year journeyed to Compostela from all over Christendom. The legend of Santiago Matamoros, or St. James the Moor Slayer, began as a war cry during the Reconquista. The Spanish warriors used to charge the Moors shouting, Santiago, Santiago, and obtain victory through his intercession. This is a great beauty and represents a glorification of St. James. I don't know of a greater glory for a combative soul. A man dies and his memory remains, not as a sign of reconciliation, but as a war cry. At the moment when the warriors enter the battle, risking everything for the Catholic cause, they have on their lips, as a symbol of fight, force, and victory, the name Santiago. The last name that many would enthusiastically cry out before dying was the name of Santiago. They end the course of this life under the protection of St. James, receiving the smile of Mary as they present themselves for their judgment. It clearly demonstrates the glory of the man's name. Let us also honor Our Lady for the glory she received from this great servant of hers, the Apostle St. James.